Welcome to the EKG Guy if this is your first time. I'm glad you're joining us and welcome back if you're returning. So in this lecture, we're going to start to look at part six here. And we're going to first look here at an acute anterolateral MI. So hopefully in this section, we're going to start to not only differentiate and localize where heart attacks or myocardial infarctions are taking place, but also how to determine if they're an acute phase, okay, or are they more persistent or have been present there for some time? Okay, so we'll look at that. Now, we have our EKG coding reference guide we've been going through. If you don't have access, all you have to do is put this into your link and then enter your email here. Click submit. You'll have to then check your email and then your email, you'll have a link and at that link, you'll click it and you'll have access here. Okay, we've gone through part one, looking at general features and atrial abnormalities, different types of rhythms. We looked at conduction delays, different AV blocks, different voltage and axes, how to determine axis, hypertrophy, conduction delays, uh, fascicular blocks, bundle branch blocks. So you can go back and listen to that. Now we're in part six, and we're going to look at these different types of myocardial infarctions. Now, if you want access to our uh, course material, you can go to www dot ekg dot md okay and there you can click on that there's books and other videos that are not available online but that you can have access to there okay so take a look at that and obviously we go in much more detail in those lectures than we do here but let's get started so anterolateral mi either age recent or probably acute so looking at an acute mi is what that means so what do we want to see here? Okay, well, some of the things you want to be able to localize to those regions. Okay, so remember that the lateral limb leads are 1 and AVL. Okay, and then the anterolateral leads tend to be in the precordial leads can be from V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, okay? Sometimes we consider the septal leads V1 and V2, but you may actually have involvement of almost all the precordial leads if it's a big infarct, okay? So this is anterolateral MI, really involving the big ventricle, the left ventricle that's being affected. So we wanna see pathological Q waves, okay? And how do we define them? Well, that means that they have to be at least 30 milliseconds wide. So if you imagine you have your QRS complex, okay? And then you have your Q wave is the first negative deflection, okay, of the QRS complex, and it must be wide. So the width of the Q wave must be at least 30 milliseconds. Uh, remember, one of the small boxes is 40 milliseconds. So if it's that width, that's certainly wide. And the depth of it should be at least one millivolt deep, okay? So going down uh, from the amplitude should be at least 0 0.1 millivolts deep. So, or you may have a QS complex. Remember, a QS complex is a complex where it simply looks like this. A Q wave, and we call this a QS complex, simply only a Q wave there, no R wave involved. So, and then you want to see these in the anterolateral leads, V2 through V6 and one in AVL. So those are the main leads you wanna see it in. So let's take a look here. Do we see those changes? Okay, well, you don't really see one. There's a, an R wave here in V1, and maybe an R wave here in uh, V2 as well, and maybe one in uh, 3, okay, and even maybe in 4. But these are significant here, okay? They're significant, especially in the setting of these ST segment elevations, okay? And that's the next thing we want to look at is the ST elevation, and this must be present in two contiguous leads, okay? And what does this mean? Two contiguous leads means two leads that are side by side in a location, okay? They're localizing, meaning if you had in the limb leads one, you'd also want to see those changes in AVL, okay? If you had an inferior infarct, you maybe you wanna see it in three uh, as well as in AVF okay, or two and maybe AVF, all right? And we'll look at inferior infarcts in another lecture. So we see what uh, those so far, okay? And you can see these Q waves developing, but notice that you have what makes this more acute is the ST segment changes, okay? So these ST segment elevations severely elevated here in all of these leads, 
These, this is not benign repolarization pattern. Okay, notice in one and AVL, you pretty much have Q waves that may be starting to form ST segment elevation. The same thing here. The still ST uh, segment is elevated in AVL and maybe Q waves starting to form. Remember, it's the ST segment that elevates before the Q waves form. And what you want to see here is with the ST segment elevation, so imagine that you have your Q wave forming, okay, and let's say we have something like this. You want to have uh, at least two millimeters in amplitude of at the J point, okay? So two millimeters at least in men, okay? And 1.5 millimeters in women, all right? And that's in V2 or V3. In the other leads, all you have to do, so V2 to V3, and then in the other leads, for men, uh, you just need at least in women one millimeter each. Okay, so that's the main one because V2 and V3, remember, that tends to be where we see those repolarization, uh, that early repolarization, which is not always a benign thing, but something to note. So we only make this diagnosis when both pathological Q waves are present, okay, and we can see them forming here, and there's ST segment elevation, okay? If there's only ST segment elevation without the pathological Q waves, then we call this a myocardial injury pattern. Okay, so remember that infarct is when you start to see Q waves developing, and we start to see them, especially in those lateral leads uh, here, especially one, you can start to see them, and maybe here, there's a little notching there, and then we could certainly see them over here in these leads starting to form, okay? And then even in this, starting to see that, but there is a little notch that may be an R wave there, okay? But this is certainly an, uh, from a patient that presented with acute onset chest pain 30 minutes prior had this EKG, okay? Uh, so still probably in that early phase, and that's why we don't see significant Q waves developing, okay? So again, just to review, anterolateral MI, the things that you need to see to call this a myocardial infarction and not just an injury are the Q waves as well as the ST segment elevation, okay? And specifically, because it's an anterolateral, we said we can see them in one and AVL as well as V2 through V6, okay? Now, notice that you have reciprocal changes also forming in the inferior leads. So notice that in the inferior leads, which are two, three, and AVF, you see reciprocal changes. They tend to be in this most prominent uh, in maybe lead two, okay? So notice the ST segment depression there, and then AVF, and then slightly in lead two, uh, or in lead three. So lead three is the most Sorry, I covered that up. Lead three is the most significant ST segment depression. So ST segment depression, this is actually reciprocal changes that we're seeing here. That's most prominent in three, followed by AVF, and then slightly in two, okay? And it should make sense because if you look at where these leads are placed, imagine lead one here, AVL here, okay? And then you have V2, V3, V4, V5 and V6, so that whole anterolateral portion of the heart is affected. And then you have the reciprocal changes. Remember, you have lead three here, AVF, and lead two. And the deepest ST segment depression is in lead three, which makes sense because it's most opposite uh, to AVL, which has um, some prominent ST segment elevation, okay? So as you move farther away, you'll see more reciprocal changes. So this is an anterolateral MI. Again, look for those Q waves and ST segment elevation. You may see those reciprocal changes in the inferior leads. But again, Q waves and ST segment elevation in 1 and AVL and V2 through V6 may be seen. Again, you need those all present. Well, that's the end of this lecture. I hope you learned something. Now, just to keep you in mind uh, of our course material that we have available. So again, if you go to our website, www.ekg.md, Okay, so this is our website, and what you'll notice is that if you go to the EKG course here, okay, you'll find stuff that's separate. So notice that we have a number of topics, practice material, lectures, a way for you to contribute, and this is the course here 
over here. So you'll notice we have over 300 videos or so, and that's more on YouTube. There's another 100, more than 100, about 200 videos that are available with the course. So those are separate videos. And this course is really designed to take you from a beginner to advanced interpreter. Okay, so completely separate from what you're getting online for free. Okay, these are um, course material that comes with it. So notice that you have a book okay and then you also have the pocket guide available so you can choose which format they are the same thing both these uh, book and the pocket guide uh, different formats uh, i really like this small one because you can keep it in your white coat if you're in the clinic or in your pocket and it's really available on the go now with the book you also get videos so notice these are the videos okay and these are a video for every single page in that book. So it's over 30 hours of video. Now there's a number of practice material that I continue to upload there. Okay, we'll have practice questions coming soon. Uh, so all of that's available. Again, this is separate from all the free material that you get already. Okay, so this is more high yield stuff. This is what we used to teach our uh, technicians here and our students here at Mayo Clinic and it's used now among many institutions so use uh, check that out now what it also includes are calipers so yes you get calipers with this course okay um i don't know anyone else that offers that but you do get calipers i think they're very helpful and they can uh you know if you know how to use them correctly uh can help to identify different uh, arrhythmias that are going on okay and then you also get our pocket EKG reference okay this was something we've put together as we were developing course for the fellows uh, and this is really nice it has every code as you saw earlier laid out there very small pocket guide available I had help with uh, my colleague Dr. Peter Noseworthy who's the head of the EKG lab here at Mayo Clinic in editing it so this is something that we use um, and we found very helpful so go to the ekg course you'll see examples of lectures okay why we developed this okay a lot of it came about from myself struggling with learning ekgs having a father that was an interventional cardiologist and you know still struggling so uh, my struggle is a struggle that i don't want you to have in learning them okay you can read all those introductory books but honestly they are not uh, enough okay and you find yourself using other resources which is part of the learning process. I wanted to expedite that process for you and make it less uh, inefficient uh, in pretty much what I struggled with going and learning through EKG. So again, from beginner to advanced level with this course, uh, you get the book, the calipers, the coding reference, video access, okay? And now we're offering 25% off. 25% off, put that code in on checkout and uh, you'll have yourself 25% um, off that will even it's pretty much covers the cost of what we use to print the material so uh, we don't really make much off it it's more to help our learners grow and really be able to contribute to patient care that's why we do this and we love doing it so thank you so much for your support um, if you have any questions just leave them below and we're happy to answer them all right have a great day